Hi, I'm the woodpecker today. I make the bottom guide and also the trunnion. In my last episode, I managed to finish the upper blade guide, but I didn't have a blade guard. So I'm making one with a roll of metal I have on hand. After cutting it to the right length, I fold the metal by clamping it between two pieces of hardwood and hitting it with a mallet and another piece of wood. When I have one fold, I repeat for the second one. Then I cut the excess. Ok, I have a guide, but I can't put it in place without some kind of support to hold it. So the first thing I do for the clamp is glue a piece of maple on a piece of plywood. When the glue is dry, I cut the maple at 45 degrees. I also cut an L-shaped piece of wood and glue it at the back of the clamp. Now I can start to work on the bottom blade guide. The first thing I do is glue two pieces of plywood together for the part which will be against the trunnion. Then I can cut another piece of plywood for the part that will hold the truss bearing. Then with a full scale pattern, I mark the placement of the bearing and the position slots. Then with the slot mortiser, I make the slots. When I'm done, I drill the hole for the bearing and take care of the T-nut. Then I assemble this part. Now that the glue is dry enough, I mark where I need to cut the other part of the guide and cut it. Then again, I mark where the slots needs to be and cut them. I'm using my slot mortiser because I was not satisfied with the slot I made with the drill press. I also need to remove some wood in the front. And make a chamfer on top. Uh, for that, I use a combination of several saws and a rasp. Now I can mark where the guide support will be and put it in place. Then the guides. Next, I drill the holes for the guide bar clamp. With those holes, I'm able to transfer the position of the upper one onto the Bansa frame. I have its position, but I need to be able to drill a straight hole. So, to help me with that, I drill a hole in a piece of scrap. Then I cut the top at an angle. Now it's easy to see the bit and my mark. After clamping the guide so the bit is at the right place, I drill a hole. I remove the guide and drill even deeper. Then I cut a piece of threaded rod and glue it inside the hole with epoxy. I spread a bit of glue inside the hole and on the rod. This way I'm sure I have enough and I leave that alone to dry. Now I begin to work on the trunnion. I begin by roughly cutting some pieces of plywood for the fixed part of the trunnion tilting mechanism. Then I cut a piece of 10mm plywood at 22.5 degrees. 
I glue those directly under the lines that are on the pattern. These will become the carriage bolts holes. To be sure they're parallel to each other, I put a scrap piece of plywood between both pieces and clamp all three pieces together. I do the same thing for the other ones and let the glue dry. When it's dry, I glue the last pieces on the back and put that aside. While this dries, I can work on the mobile parts of the trunnion, the ones that will be screwed to the table. After gluing the pattern perfectly in line with the plywood edge, I glue some pieces of plywood under in line with the lines of the pattern. While this dries, I can take care of the trunnion support. This is made of six maple boards that I've glued together. I begin by cleaning the glue. Then I cut one side straight. Since this is thicker than what I'm able to cut with my table saw, I have to turn the glue up to finish the cut. Now that I have one nice side, I can cut this to width, then to length. Next, I trace all the cuts I need to make on this block of wood. The first cut I want to do is the angle cut under the block. To guide me, I cut four plywood corner blocks. Then I stick them to my block. And with those, I have a straight surface so I can make the cut under the support. I make several test cuts and when I have the right depth, I remove all the wood with a series of cuts. Next, the notch for the blade guide. Now I'm ready to try this, <laughs> but it's only now that I realize that the T-bolt is in the way and the bolt is too long. Ah, this is not a big deal. Perfect. Now I'm able to mark the placement of the guide's bolts. I drill two holes, smaller than the actual bolts, and tap them. And here's how this will fit together. But when I try this in place, <laughs> it's not working. Even with the support pushed against the wheel, I'm unable to align the guide with the blade. Ah, this is because I've used bigger shafts than what's on the plan. I had to move the shafts one centimeter higher than instructed. So to keep the same blade length, I also move the bottom wheel up. To try to fix this, I go back to the table saw. Ah, this is not enough. I finish the shape by hand. Okay, this works now, but this modification will haunt me later on. But for now, I'm able to mark the placement of the support so I can glue more wood blocks there. Next, I can find the placement for the mounting holes. <laughs> I take care to avoid the holes for the guide. I begin by drilling some big shallow holes for the screw's head. Then the true holes. Now with the support in place, I can mark where the holes will end up on the frame. To drill straight holes, I make a guide again. Then I can drill the six pilot holes. and screw the base in place. <laughs> but 
but when I try to put the wheel in place, I see that to do that, the support shouldn't be there. I need to remove it. Now I can put the wheel back and the support. And also the guide. Okay, now I'm going to use this piece of plywood and turn it into a temporary table. The first thing I do is cut a slot for the blade. Then I screw four wings to hold it to the Trion support. Then I can put it in place. And with that, I can use my new bandsaw for the first time. And the first thing I'll do is cut all the plywood pieces for the Trion. <laughs> Even with a quarter horsepower motor, it's working like a charm. The first piece I ever cut on my pencil. saw. <laughs> I still need to cut a bunch. Here they are. All the pieces needed for the trunnion. And it's going to work like this. But I also need to cut a special washer for the carriage bolts. After drilling their sander holes, I cut them. Then I sand all the pieces real nice. This is going to work fine. I also need to square out the holes of my wooden washers. Perfect. Now I need to remove the support so I can screw the plywood pieces onto it. The first thing I do is trace the form of the arc on both ends. I need to remove a bit of wood because I don't want the movable part to rub onto the support. So I just cut a bit of wood. I use a spacer on the back of the support and set my saw so it won't cut all the way and I'm done. Perfect. Now I just need to mark where I want the dowels. Then I drill some holes to the size of a number 10 screw. After transferring the position of the holes onto the other piece, I drill it also. Also drill pilot holes onto the support itself. Now I just need to glue and screw both sides in place. And I can begin to work on the saw table. Uh, but I think this will be the subject of the next episode of The Woodpecker. Yeah.